Yulia and Ludmilla escaped the Russian bombardment of Mariupol on March the 19th. Over the next few days, they risked their lives three times driving back into the city, braving bullets, shells and airstrikes in a desperate attempt to find the father of their family, 61-year-old Alexander Pilipenko. They fear he never made it out. We were driving. There were Russians on one side, Ukrainians on the other, and they were shooting, says Yulia. We were in the middle. It was terrifying. But we were determined to get dad. The family used to live near the Azov steel plant, where an estimated 2,500 Ukrainian soldiers and civilians were trapped for weeks. As the fighting intensified, they fled to a basement under a block of flats in the city centre. On the day they escaped, the shelling was intense, and Alexander never made it from the basement to the waiting civilian car. We were sure he knew we would come back for him, says Ludmilla, and he would wait for us in the basement. A few days later, they returned to where they had last seen Alexander. We saw all the buildings were burnt and destroyed, says Ludmilla, and there was no one there. Ludmilla and Yulia's story is not uncommon. The United Nations estimates that Russia's invasion has forced more than 12 million people to flee their homes. The Ukrainian government says thousands of them are searching for friends and loved ones, missing, feared dead. Anna Chazovnikova is a psychologist, volunteering at a centre helping some of the tens of thousands of people from Mariupol who fled to the Ukrainian-controlled side. Today I had a lady whose husband was killed in front of her, and she asked, why did I survive? She, like so many, is deeply disturbed, constantly breaking down and refusing to accept what has happened. Families who come to this centre receive food parcels once every two weeks. Children play while their parents register and tell their stories to volunteers. Andre used to work at the azov style plant as a lathe operator. He says he left many friends behind. I think they are more sympathetic to the occupiers. They call me and ask, when are you coming back? But I will never return with Russians in control. Anastasia was a social worker in Mariupol before the war. She struggles to hold back her tears. We all lost friends. They're gone forever. In my case, it would have been death or captivity because I refuse to work under the occupiers. I don't know if I will ever see my city again. The Ukrainian government accuses Russia of forcing tens of thousands of people from Mariupol into Russia, an accusation Russia denies. Yulia and Ludmilla say their only hope is that Alexander is still alive. Charles Stratford, Al Jazeera, Kyiv.